What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And today we're gonna go into the snake room. We're gonna take a look at the Burmese Python clutch that has, I believe, completely hashed out. A lot of people have contacted me. They want berms. They want to know what I got in this clutch. I don't even know. I got a few peeks, sneak peeks ahead of time. Put a little few pictures up on Instagram, but I haven't seen them all yet. So let's take a look. Go into the snake room and you never know. We might even find a couple ball python clutches on the ground, maybe some boa babies. I don't know. Let's see what's going on. All right, very anticipated clutch. I hope this, we got a couple good eggs from this. I'm a little nervous, the male was a little young. This is my pinstripe ultra male that I bred to one of her sons from two years ago. And he is a orange dream ultra male. So obviously we're trying to go for some orange dream stuff here. Uh, on the ultra males. Everything should be ultra males. Like I said, she's she hopefully she's on some good eggs. She's a big girl, so she might just be covering those eggs up. Let's take a little peek here. Oh yeah, we got some good eggs. Alright, so that'll be great. So I'm gonna show you the male in a little bit. She's gorgeous. I mean she's a gorgeous, gorgeous I got this from Vin Russo in 2014, this girl. Took a few, she took a while to breed, but she's been breeding for me the last two, three years. This is the third year in a row. She is Spectacular. The pinstripe and, and ultramel work really well together. We got that orange dream into the ultramel last year, and now we're going to try to go for orange dream, pinstripe ultramel. That's got to be a really, really orange snake. So, super happy. Let's take a look at the male and then we'll pull this clutch. Here's my orange dream ultramel. You can just see that ultramel is just really lit up with the, when you put that orange dream into it. Look at that nice head stamp in the orange. A lot of highlighting going on here. You can see that nice belly, clear belly. There's the beautiful head. I can't even imagine what Super Orange Dream Ultra Mel is going to look like. Well, I guess I can because I think, I think Ozzy's made it. <laughs> so, it looks really nice, put it that way. So, this boy's a daddy. The good thing is I have another male, if you guys are interested. From that same letter, same age as this guy. Let's go over here and see if we can take a look at him. There he is. Another Orange Dream Ultra Mel that I, I, he's for sale on Morph Market. He is breeder ready. And someone can get a steal on this guy right now and start breeding with him this year. All right, there she is. She's uh, still pretty big considering she gave birth. If anyone's wondering what this, this, this box I'm always shooting video on when I pull these females out, this is my ARS baby rack that I got that I still have yet to put together because the hybrid rack is a lot cheaper, it's a lot lighter, it's a lot more environmentally friendly, but there's a thousand and one parts in here. I'll show you in a second. And I'm, I'm dreading putting it together, but I've done one already, so I, I guess I could do it. Let's wash her off. You thought I was kidding? Look at this box. Yeah, there's a lot of tubs in here, but underneath it, there's five million parts. Everything's in pieces. You gotta screw everything together. And it's a big rack. It's gonna look like this when it's assembled. <laughs> and it's in that many pieces. Not looking forward to it. Would anyone wanna help me put it together? Come on over. We got seven good eggs. There seems to be veins and arteries and embryos in these eggs. I uh, candled them with my phone. Everything looks good. So I'm excited. Obviously everything in this clutch will be Ultramel, which is, a, for those of you who don't know, is, a T, is one of the lines of T-positive albinos. That means terosinase positive, meaning they do have some, some uh, production of melanin, just not a lot. It's a reduced uh, reduction of melanin. It's reduction of melanin. And the funny thing is that we call them T-positive albinos, but they're really hypos. I mean, they're really hypomelanistic. I mean, they, they have melanin, they just don't have a lot of it. And the caramel albino, the ultramel, they're just not compatible lines of, you can breed them together, you get two separate. As a matter of fact, I even have a, an animal from Vin Russo, it's called the caramillo. It's both the T-positive and uh, the T-positive caramel and the T-positive ultramel line together. And it creates a completely different animal, which tells me that they're not, that they're, they're different genes. So that's really kind of cool. Obviously, when you combine Ultramel with a Hypo, you get an Ultramel, uh, you get the Ultra Glow. And when you combine the Caramel with the 
hypo, you get the caramel glow, and I showed you a clutch of those the other day. So, obviously, maybe we can get the caramello mixed in with the hypo, and I don't know what we call that Car caramello glow, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, so this should be cool uh, just because we got Orange Dream in here and we could get the double dose. So if we get the Super Orange Dream Ultramel or Super Orange Dream Pinstripe Ultramel, that would be uh, super cool. All right, here we go, guys. This is one of my favorite clutches of the year, the Burmese Python clutch. It was a hypo granite double head albino in green bred to a hypo granite double head albino in green. Repeated the pairing from last year. Let's take a look. All the eggs have hatched. Let's see what we got. All right, we're going to go into this egg box first. I have three egg boxes because this, you know, they're big eggs. And even though I didn't have that many of them, I still needed bigger egg boxes. <laughs> they're not, these things are huge when they're born. This is a really, really nice little group here. I think they're all the same. It's amazing. I think they're all hypo. These are all hypo granites. Really, really gorgeous looking. Look at that. I love granite, first of all, in the berms. And when you put that hypo gene in it, it just really, really lights them up. It, uh, I like them with, without the uh, hypo gene too, but the, with the hypo gene, they're really, really special looking. Remember, there's no albino in this whatsoever. This, this has no albino, these snakes in it. I should have probably left them in the egg box. I wanted to just show you though, what they look like. They're so nice. And they're, they're very frisky when they're little like this. And once the heat gets going on them, forget about it. Now I'm gonna have to keep them in the box. Okay. The other guys are nice and calm. This guy is getting crazy because I took him out. And he feels the warmth of the cement. And now he's uh, he's all jacked up here. But these are hypo granites. Once again, look at that beautiful head they have. I love it. So light. So interesting looking. They just have a lot of interesting time. They're almost golden looking when they're babies like this. They get a little more yellow as they get older, but I, I think the yellow is nice too. Um, but we have, how many do we have here? One, I have three. So we got three really nice hypo granites. These will be on sale at some point after they eat a few times. Assuming they don't run away from me. Let's take a look at the next box. All right. Here's box number two. I'm afraid to take these out because they're gonna start going crazy. Here is a granite that has no hypo in it. And it's very dark and very interesting in its own right. Once again, I, I love the granite gene in berms. I think it gives it a lot of interesting looking stuff. It takes away the usual berm pattern that you're used to seeing the normal and this this is so interesting. And I love the way the heads look on the, on the granites. So contrast that with another hypo granite right there. I'm in the shop, so I should probably be in a different location. All right, so there's a granite, hypo granite. Now here is a, what I believe to be a hypo, excuse me, a, a green granite. So green is a patternless, is the patternless berm morph. And you can see the difference between this granite and this granite. This one almost looks like it has no granite left in it. I believe this is a green granite. And once again, they're all gonna be, this one would be 66% head albino. This would be 66% head albino, head green. And same for this one. Everything will have granite in this litter because the both parents were granites. Now, if you look at this little, this little, and I haven't sexed these yet, this is almost like a paradox looking type of snake. Why I screwed up with the shadows here, but sorry about that. This one has some like paradoxing, I think, in there, it looks like. Right? You have this granite pattern, so, and then you have these like blotches in there. I hope you guys can pick that up on the camera. Very interesting looking. I don't know what that is. This is certainly not a hypogranite. That's definitely a granite. Because here's your hypogranite. Now let's look at this 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 little beauty here. This is this the last one in this little box here. That is a what I believe to be a pearl, which is a hypo albino. It's also granite, and I think it might be green too. I think we might hit every gene. 
because it's not a dense granity pattern like this one. It's more like this one, the diffuse one. So I think there's green. There's definitely albino and hypo in there. So that's, that's what we call pearl. That's why it's got that pearlescent look to it. And so I think we hit everything. I think we have the hypo albino green granite. So that's very, it's interesting. You know, I, always, I, I get a lot of different variation from all these snakes in the same clutch, and I like that. Really like that a lot, so nice little group here. Let's look at the box three. All right, there's box number three. Right here, right off the bat, I see my ivory, or black-eyed leucistic, although I don't know if it's black. Is that black or blue eyes? It almost looks a little bluish looking. But that's our, this is our ivory here girl. Oh boy, I don't know, having sex them. Definitely looks like the eyes could be possibly blue, although I don't think so. They used to be blue-eyed blue cystics. Look at that. That, that. that looks very bluish to me, that eye. I'll have to ask my good friend Tom Regan, who's the berm expert, what he thinks. We have um, two more hypogranites in here as well. I don't know if we need to take them all out because they're going to start getting all jacked up because of the heat. The sun decided to come out full force. And then we have another Luckily I'm not getting bit by this, even though they're a little frisky. Let's put a top on here. Hold on. I should have kept my mouse on that like striking. This one I think is another one of those pearl green granites. Look at these guys, they're like trying to get out of the box. They're like pushing the box open. They're so strong. So this I believe is a pearl green granite. That's a hypo albino, which is the pearl. And then green, and it has to be granite because everything's granite. So you can see the lack of it. There's a little speckles left, but the green pretty much erased that. So this snake is really, really cool looking. Look at that white head. And just a lot going on there. So we got a lot of hypo granites which that's what both parents were, so I don't, that doesn't surprise me. And then we got a couple of really cool ones and we got a lot of variations. So I know a lot of people, it's funny, a lot of people have been contacting me. When is the, the berm clutch gonna be available? What did you produce? What are you gonna make? Uh, I want one. Well, guys, here they are. You see them? Hit me up and uh, I'll decide which ones I wanna release and which ones I might keep. With the thing with berms, they get so big, you really can't keep that many. It's not like ball pythons. So I'll let you guys know. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed all the berms. They're very difficult to film on, especially by yourself, because once they get heated up and they get going, they don't want to sit around for very long. They want to take off and, and, and explore. Ball pythons will lay there all day usually, but you know that's the way it goes. And it was a little sunny out, but I think we got some good footage. I got to take a look at it. Uh, I'm excited about the berm clutch. I think I might even grab one baby and keep that one or two babies. I don't know, I, it's very hard. Every baby you keep, you've got to have caging to be able to keep those things you know, in a big, you know, at least, at least six foot cage for the females and really a six foot for the, for the males too, but you could probably get away with a big four foot. The point is that if you're gonna buy a burr, make sure you have the space for it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed what you saw today. We got a lot more eggs in that incubator hatching. You're gonna see a lot more cool stuff over the next couple of days. Plus, a lot of stuff is shedding out as well that you might've gotten a sneak peek of. Now you're gonna get a full in-depth look. I wanna go over that hypo blood Parrot het, uh, het annery boa litter that I had about a week and a half ago. I think they all shed out. Uh, got some great stuff in that. Stay tuned. Guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit that like button. We'll see you back tomorrow morning.